Hello, and thank you for joining me today, everybody. My name's Ryan Hallway, and I'm a solutions architect at TetraScience. Today, I'll discuss how TetraScience's scientific data cloud is allowing our customers to streamline research in their laboratories. A little bit about TetraScience, we're the only purpose-built scientific data cloud serving 17 of the top 25 global pharma organizations. We have the largest partner network in life science and provide deep domain expertise in the realms of both science and technology. Nearly half of our customers have GXP deployments. And finally, we provide AI-enabled harmonized data in the form of Tetra data, which can be leveraged for analytics and powerful AI and machine learning models. We're committed to our customers' needs when it comes to scientific data. And this scientific data journey begins with data integration and management, where TetraScience first automates the collection of scientific data from instruments, informatic systems, and any other source that generates scientific data. Once the data is collected and centralized to a common location, we automatically engineer the data to a standard harmonized data format known as Tetra data. Now that the data is in a standardized format, the fun can begin. Applications can now easily aggregate data from multiple sources to build dashboards and gain insights. And as we all know, without large scale, well-engineered standardized data, AI models will be largely useless. So we provide standardized Tetra data to be the foundation of meaningful AI and machine learning models. Cosmic Cliffs is the name of this image, captured by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope last year. We're looking at a star forming region in outer space. Before this telescope, it was impossible to see these cosmic cliffs with the naked eye. And with new technology, like capturing this image with infrared light, we're able to see previously invisible areas of star birth. I think it's an amazing photo and revolutionary what we're capturing with evolving technology. And while we're not exploring the galaxies here at Tetra Science, we are able to unlock previously unseen insights by leveraging new technology. With that, let's get into the demonstration. First, we'll see how sample information for a plate reader can be automatically correlated with the plate reader results, then surfaced for consumption in an electronic lab notebook. So I'm gonna to jump to my ELN here, and here we can see sample information from our first four columns has been automatically correlated with the plate reader results in the last column eliminating the need for copy and paste. And I have one other experiment here that I'll tee up for my demonstration. We'll create a new experiment. I will insert a run and I will make another Envision plate absorbance experiment here, which I'll insert into my notebook. And I will insert some data from my inbox. Uh-oh. It looks like the inbox is currently empty, but we'll show how the platform can automatically populate that inbox. Then we'll see how those plate reader results can be visualized and compared against each other. This is an application we built to view our plate reader data as a heat map, as well as select and view IC50 curves to analyze, which I'll discuss more momentarily. First, we'll use the scientific data cloud to automatically correlate sample information with instrument results. A component of the scientific data cloud is the Tetra data platform, which we can view as this cloud in the middle of the screen. Say I'm a scientist running a plate reader experiment. The experiment's going to start with an Excel-based plate map. We're looking at a 384 well plate map with our well location, 
compound information, including our negative and positive controls, as well as compound identifiers, our concentration, and replicate information. This plate map is stored on the platform. We're running our experiment on an Envision, uh, Perkin Elmer Envision plate reader. Once the plate reader is complete, its raw data is automatically sent to the Tetra data platform where it's tagged with metadata, stored, and archived. For demo purposes, I'm going to manually drag and drop a raw plate reader file into a directory the platform is monitoring. I'll briefly change over to my remote desktop where the platform is monitoring this two process folder. I'm going to drag and drop this file ending in 006-B into that folder the platform is monitoring. Now I'll jump back to the presentation. I just simulated this step of the plate reader file being dropped onto the platform. In production environments, this step would be automated. But for the demo today, I wanted to show that. Because once that raw data lands on the platform, a pipeline is triggered to produce Tetra data. Tetra data enables interoperability and reuse of the data by harmonizing the data and exposing the data via API and SQL. For this particular use case, once the Tetra data is produced, it's automatically associated with the well locations from the plate map. Scientists no longer have to spend time manually copy and pasting the instrument results to the plate map or their ELN, which also introduces human error. These former manual tasks are now, are now automated by the platform. Once the Tetra data has been combined with the plate mapping data, the platform will automatically send that associated data to the Benchling inbox for the scientists to consume. What we would expect to see in Benchling is our plate map combined with the absorbance results of our plate reader data all in one table and correlated together. Some key benefits of leveraging the Tetra data platform in this workflow are reducing the hours scientists spend copying and pasting data, reducing error caused by manual transcription, and freeing up time for more meaningful tasks such as experimentation and analysis. Now we'll jump back into Benchling. Let's see if we were able to successfully automate the data being populated into the Benchling inbox. I'll refresh my page, select insert from inbox like I did previously, And like magic, we see the platform has pushed the data to our Benchling inbox available for our scientists. So I will select and I will insert this run into my Benchling notebook. I'll scroll down and I can see all my absorbance information in this table where I have the information from my plate map in my first four columns automatically associated with my plate reader instrument results, all in one table, easy for the scientist to consume. In conclusion, the Tetra data platform was able to automate the correlation of our plate map with our Tetra data and push those results to Benchling with very little manual interaction. Now, how can we analyze and visualize this plate reader data further? Now that our plate reader data is harmonized to Tetra data on the platform, we have endless possibilities. Streamlit is an open source 
Python-based visualization tool used to build that we use to build an application directly on top of the platform. So I will jump over to that Streamlit application. And here we're able to view our plate reader information as heat maps and IC50 curves. I'm able to specify the dates I want to search the platform for. And I can look at my heat map based on the files in the platform. So if I refresh the page, I want to look at data since we'll say August 8th, 2023, and we have six files since then. And I'd like to select a file. And we saw that file that we ingested onto the platform was 006-B, so I'd like to select that file. We're looking at a single well a single uh, 384 well plate where we have two IC50 curves per row that we're looking at with a total of 16 rows. Each IC50 curve corresponding to a unique drug candidate. So if I'm viewing my heat map, let's say I'm interested in my IC50 curve on my A row, I can scroll down and select my A row for my IC50 curve. And automatically, I can view that IC50 curve. I can view another curve if I'd like as well. And we can see this is automatically uh, populated with my updated curve. And now we have a small data science experiment that we can run here where we're comparing our curve similarities. For example, say I wanna select that curve uh, associated with row C, I'll select that curve, and then we're running an algorithm in the background that's selecting the curve most similar to that C four through 13 curve. And it looks like that most similar curve is in row M with a similarity value of around 99%. And I can scroll down and automatically I can see the curve of interest as well as the curve that is most similar to it, all on top of our Tetra data platform. In conclusion, once instrument data is harmonized to Tetra data on the Tetra data platform, it provides scientists and data engineers with well engineered, standardized data as the foundation of data applications, visualizations, and meaningful AI and machine learning models. Thank you for listening.